But you just thought they were words, didn't you? You thought he just said, you know, words uh, like that before you were born, before the foundation of this world, God blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Yeah, but that's just words, aren't they? You know, that's just a verse in the Bible. You know, surely he didn't really do that. Oh, yes, he did. Amen. Every one of you, every one of you, before you were born, before the foundation of the world, He blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Have a look at it. And He says, not only did He bless us, but He says in verse 4, that He chose you. He chose you. And in that choosing, He chose you for a particular purpose. Because God has a will and purpose for your life. Yes, he does. Every one of you, God's got a will and purpose for your life. Amen. And so what did He choose us for? That you, you, yes. you, yes. and you, that you would stand before God holy and without blame yes. before Him in love. Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. This is reality. Amen. You see, but, but that's just a verse in the Bible. They're just words, aren't they? No, sir. God spoke those words. Therefore, those words must accomplish what He sent them to do. Amen. That's your reality if you can accept it. You see, our problem is today that we hear uh, something that God says to us but we don't take any notice of it. We don't believe, we don't really believe that when God speaks it is and it must accomplish what God sent it to do and then it returns back to God. Every word that He spoke. How did God create the heavens and the earth? He spoke. Yes. And it was. Because that's how spirit functions. That's how it functions. So, of course, we were just reading uh, Psalm 105. Where, were we reading those verses? Did you read that one, those five verses? Yes. Oh, Lord, help us here. Let's just go back a minute. 103. 103, I'm sorry, not 105. 103. First five verses. That's right, I'm getting confused. Psalm 103, verse 5 verses. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Right. He says in Hebrews chapter 8, under the new covenant, what does he say? And your sins and your iniquities. I remember them no more. Did God speak those words? Yes, He did. And that means your iniquities, your sins. He said, I don't even remember them. You see? And, and we can, you know, we miss out on so much because we don't believe that when God speaks, it is. We don't believe in the reality that when God speaks, whatever He says, that's it. You've got it. It says here, who redeems thy life from destruction. Every day, thousands of cells in your body are being destroyed. But He said, I'm redeeming you, your body from destruction. Yes. Why? Because He wants you to live forever. Right. <coughs> you see, when you understand that when God speaks, that is your reality. That's when He speaks to you. Whatever He says to you, yes. that's reality. Let's turn to John's Gospel, chapter 4. 
And this is just a little example, just to show you what we're really talking about. John chapter 4. And it says in verse 48, Jesus said to a man who came to Jesus and said, My son is dying. I want you to come down, please, and, and, and heal him, save his life. So Jesus said, well, he said, you know, everybody just wants to see a miracle. Everybody just wants to see signs and wonders. And the man ignored that statement and said, sir, I love my boy. This is my son, and he's dying. I'm not interested in signs and wonders. All I want is for you to heal my boy. That's all. And what did Jesus say? He says, go your way. Go home. Your son is alive. He's fine. Now, you got your Bible? All right, look at it very carefully. Because I want to show you how this thing works. That's verse 50. Go thy way, your son is alive. Hallelujah. Now, what did the man do? Did he say, well, of course, that's just a verse in the Bible, you know. That's just a, they're words, you know. I mean, because God had to say something, so he just told me my son's okay. And he will, even if he's dead, he's probably still okay because God's going to look after him. No, no, no. Listen to this. It says, and the man believed the word that God spoke to him. <laughs> so what did he do? Went he turned around and went home. <laughs> Thank you very much. Off he goes. He's happy. Why? His son's alive. How does he know? Because Jesus told him. God doesn't tell you lies. God had never lied once. If God says something, I want to tell you it is truth. That's right. Hallelujah. It's the truth. So the man's on his way home. And the servants, they're coming up to meet him. And they said, Master, 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 your son's okay. He said, Yeah, I know. They said, You know? How do you know? You haven't been home? No, he said, I oh, know. He said, But Jesus told me. Oh, come on, beloved. Amen. It's time for you to start and believe what God says about you. It's time for you to believe what God says about you. When you were created, you were created in the likeness and the image of God. God didn't create you a sinner. He created you in the likeness and image of God. What does that mean? It means you have the nature of and the character of God Himself built into you. You cannot legislate morality. I don't care what laws the the government may may form. I don't care what laws you make in your home for your sons and daughters and your teenagers particularly. You can make all the rules you like, but I want to tell you, you can't legislate morality. But when you do something that violates the nature of Jesus Christ, you know about it. Amen. Because you are guilty. You feel, Amen. you feel the guilt within you. You see? So that's very important for us to understand these things. So the man believed the word that God spoke to him. John chapter 5, verse 24. I'm just trying to follow the Lord here, so we just keep going. Verse 24, Matthew, uh, John chapter 4, 5. Verily I say unto you, verily, verily I say unto you, this is God speaking to you. Can you hear this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not talking to the man down the road. He's not talking to uh, nations uh, somewhere across the sea. He's talking to you. When you read this, listen. God is talking to you. What's he say? He that hears my word. But not this way. You have to hear the word inwardly. Why? Because this is where God is. He's in here. He 
He's not up there, not up in the sky. 